Good afternoon, Canadian Car Guy. I'm back for another video. Today, I'm going to be doing a review as well as a takedown on my 1954 Russian made SKS. Uh, for those of you who may be thinking of getting a, your first rifle and want something that's uh, reliable, durable, and just an all around great, out of the box, accurate rifle. Uh, an SKS may be for you. So just a little bit about uh, some of the attachments that I've uh, put on this. I do have a scope for it. This is a uh, Chinese made uh, ACOG style optic. It's got uh, backup adjustable uh, fiber optic sights. See uh, on the back here, it's fully adjustable. So you can move it either up or down, depending on your eye relief. The top turret right here is for uh, your color change reticles, red, green, and blue, and three varying intensities to each. Also have windage and elevation controls. It's a pretty nice looking scope, very good scope. Uh, haven't had any issues with it. It's also got those uh, backup uh, attachments on the side, so you can put uh, like a small laser sight or whatever you want on it. Just a couple of small rails. Now the top rail uh, I ordered from Amazon. It was about uh, 80 or 85 dollars when I got it. Um, unfortunately, it's not that great, although it is nice to have the full length top rail. Uh, it is a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, to put in on the uh, where your front sights would normally go. So you have to take those uh, factory sights out and replace it with this rail, uh, which it did take a while. It took, uh, took two of us to be able to do it. Uh, there's a lot of pressure under that uh, that pressure plate, so you really have to push down hard, uh, maybe even use a clamp to do it. Uh, so we'll start by clearing the weapon. Of course, I know it's already clear, but I'll show you. I got this really handy extended uh, magazine release from MagWedge. It's uh, it is a full metal mag release, and it's fully adjustable. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, this might be for you. I really like it. Really handy to have. That way you don't have to reach so far just to uh, take your magazine out. See, it's empty. Bit of a tight fit with these magazines. Now you can see, weapon is clear. Now, as per Canadian law, this is a uh, 25 or 30 round uh, bare arms um, magazine pinned to five you can see the rivet there so that's what pins it and you can take off the floor plate and uh, change the spring and the uh, and the follower if need be so really nice uh, they do fit nice and snug especially with this ATI combat stock so I can't complain with that uh, now the big difference with the ATI combat stock and the TAPCO stock is a rail that's mounted on the front here on the handguard and I believe it's got a couple rails on the on the side as well uh, this one came with uh, quite a few rails so it's got a rail on the bottom so I put on a uh, mag uh, is it mag pole AFG2 angled foregrip 
And with these, you can also swap out the, uh, the center lug here. It is a screw on. So when you, uh, when you put this on, it, it does come with a, uh, with a couple of screws. You can take it out there. Uh, that's kind of what holds it in. Um, very simple. It's just a small nut on the other side. Now, moving towards the uh, barrel, Let's flip her over here. We've got an LMJ CN uh, 1000 lumen flashlight for low level conditions, low light level conditions, I should say. So it is quite bright, but it's nice to have. Of course, you don't want to keep it on for too long because that one does tend to get pretty warm. Let's see, I've got an extra rail here. I've got the rail on the other side that my flashlight is mounted on, and it's got uh, a four inch on the bottom. So those came with the, uh, with the rifle when I bought it. I bought it with the ATI combat stock, so I didn't have to uh, change anything over. Uh, this was about $350 for just the, the stock with the base uh, barrel. So it's not too bad. They always do charge a little bit extra just for the stock. But uh, otherwise everything else is, is pretty well stock on these rifles. Uh, same, uh, same inner parts to them. Uh, you can, if you have one with a laminate stock, you can take the barrel out of that, swap it into this one, and you won't have any issues. Uh, the only issue I did have was with the takedown lever. A little safety on the side. Now when you take these apart, you're going to want the safety on. So just to tell you a little bit about the issue I had with this one. It does have a uh, fully adjustable cheek rest. So I've got it adjusted as far uh, as far up as it can go. And it does have this little lever there. So you can bring it out to wherever you want it. It does kind of stick a little bit. That's typically where I like to have it. And it is collapsible as well. So you just push down. Of course, I'm kind of doing things backwards here, so. So for easier storage. And it doesn't take much just to fold itself back out again. Now it's locked. So back to the issue that I had with this one, uh, trying to put in this top rail is I had to use a uh, four and a half inch grinder and I had to cut off the uh, factory uh, takedown lever that came with this rifle because unfortunately when they come into Canada there are some things on these rifles that are uh, that are welded in that probably shouldn't be uh, for instance the uh, top handguard will not come off uh, that's uh Pretty well stuck in place like it's it's not welded of course because it's plastic but uh, it is like glued into place pretty heavily so it's really difficult if you want to change that out and I had to uh, once I uh, once I lift this rail off you'll see I'll show you how uh, how I had to kind of fix uh, the stock a little bit to accommodate this rail Go ahead and take takedown screw out. Instead of a takedown lever, like the one I had to cut out, this rail came with this uh, nice little screw in. And it's I find it's a little bit better than the original takedown levers. Uh, I do kind of like this setup. Seems a little bit better made. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, American-made uh, squad automatic weapons. 
this rail comes up just like it would a saw. It is a very tight fit. You can see, just kind of simply lifts off. And how well you'll be able to see this, I'll bring it closer here. I had to cut out with a uh, Dremel a uh, piece of the stock here so I can accommodate the rail because the rail uh, comes down and as it comes down if it's not uh, it won't line up properly and uh, you won't be able to properly cinch it down if it's not cut out so I actually had to cut that out it did take some time it took about uh, three hours to do one sitting but uh, it was worth it at least I got it working well enough that uh, didn't really have any issues it is a pretty tight fit uh, for these rails but it will fit over your receiver plate and as I say you'll just have to notch that out just to get it to fit a little bit better so that comes up um, another problem with this rail I'll put it uh, yeah, I'll leave it up here. Turn the rifle around so you can see. This isn't the greatest rail. So if you want a rail for yourself, I'd suggest getting something a little bit better than this. But uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Uh, maybe not too well. But as the shells eject, it'll notch up your rail. And so it's it's pretty rough. You're going to have to either repaint it or I would suggest just getting a better rail. Uh, it's also caused a couple of stovepipe jams for me, which isn't really that much of an issue, but it happens. So you're just going to have to either deal with it or try and find a better rail that uh, that suits it. So they're not the greatest rails, but they work. If that's the best that you can get, then uh, so be it, I suppose. It was really the best I could get in my area, unfortunately. I'll take it off the receiver cover here. Now the difference between the Russian-made SKSs and the Chinese SKSs is uh, mostly internal parts. On the Russian weapons, they're better made, uh, especially uh, when you're talking about the springs. Uh, the springs are uh, double, if not triple braided, so they're a little more durable. Uh, they won't uh, they won't wear as quickly as what uh, the ones in the in the Chinese SKSs do. Uh, I've heard after some ten thousand rounds or so in a uh, Chinese SKS, you have to start worrying about changing springs. Um, I haven't put nearly 10,000 rounds in this yet. I barely put in a, a couple thousand. I'm probably only in the hundreds, but uh, maybe a thousand at the most. But they uh, haven't had to change over any springs yet. Haven't even had to think about that yet. But uh, I do plan on getting some extra springs. Later on, just in case. So as for the receiver cover, very simple. And it's stamped there. 1954 Russian. Put that aside. There's the recoil spring and guide. Now you can take the recoil spring off the guide. And you'll see there's just a... Uh, a keeper on the top so you have to compress this spring down that'll release the keepers so you just take the keeper out and you can easily replace your spring or uh, spring guide your bolt and bolt carrier. Put the rail down. Put it over. Take out the trigger group. 
which is simply just two small screws. Or if I use the right screwdriver. Grip just slides off. Very comfortable rubber grip. Easy to replace if you need to replace them, but you should never have to replace the grips. I don't know if you can get any other type of grips for this. There's just the stock ATI. There's a screw down in the bottom here. Now what I like to do when I take the grip off is simply just lift it out and that way the screw inside there stays in and you don't have to worry about trying to find it later. Trigger group. Now as I say it's very easy and it's a hell of a lot easier if you take out the trigger group with the safety in the on position if it's off, you're going to have a harder time trying to get your trigger group in. So just bear that in mind. Now for this, I prefer to use a Robertson bit with a uh, fairly good sized head on it. I'll turn this over. Hopefully you can see this. That little nug down in there is going to have to... Uh, be depressed and it's very simple to do it's going to take a little bit of force to get it down Pretty tight fit as you can see but there's the trigger group and I'll show you how to put in your uh, magazine release so if you look on the front there's a little uh, pin that holds it in so what you're gonna have to do is press it out and that is pressed in as well so it's gonna take Sometime it's going to take a lot of force, but uh, if you have a vise, I suggest using a vise and uh, some sort of uh, maybe a clamp to try and press it out. But once you get that out, then that spring in there is going to come forward. So when you put your uh, mag wedge extended release in, you'll have to depress that and uh, there's a little, uh, there's a little screw that's on the very front part of this spring, and that's to adjust it. So as you move that spring and that uh, that screw, you'll be able to adjust for your magazine release. So that that didn't take much to do. But all the time and the effort is into pressing in and out that pin. So that's going to take some time. So just be wary of that. Now as I turn this rifle over, you're going to notice a little spring in there. So try not to lose that spring because that's what holds in your trigger group. That's what keeps the pressure on it. You can see it's just a small spring, so you don't lose that. Keep all your springs and all your screws together. Always remember where, they're, where those go. So as for the barrel, So what we're going to do 
Just take out the gas port, gas tube. And that's pretty simple, just to take down lever there on the side. Take your Robertson bit and kind of gently push up. So you'll see that that does come up just a little bit. Try and bring it closer here so you can see. So what you're going to want to do is press your screwdriver just under it and lift up. That's all it takes. Now keep in mind, as you lift that, that's going to release your, uh, your gas tube. So you might have to adjust that a few times to get your gas tube out. And just give it just a slight wiggle. Get some stuff in the way here. So you can see, I lifted that out fairly easily. So just give it a bit of a wiggle. You'll see that comes off. And just have to be careful because there are some sharp parts and I'm just skin myself a little. I just got to be careful. So these metal bits are pretty sharp, so just be careful of that. All right, so now that that's off, now you can lift the barrel out. But before you do that, you can take out the uh, uh, your smaller piston. Here's the gas tube. So if you want to change out the gas tube, there's these two plates, one at the back, one at the front, and those have to be um, those have to be taken out somehow. Uh, I'm not too sure how to do it. It's almost like they're not really pressed in, but they're uh, they're held pretty tightly into place. And I I don't know how to take those out. I've tried, can't quite figure it out. All right. Now, being that this is a short, uh, what they call a short, uh, short gas tube. Uh, so there's the one uh, piston. Now, unlike an AK, an AK-47 or a 74 series typically has a long stroke. There, it's what's called as a long stroke gas piston. So it takes one piston to operate the entire system. An SKS is a short stroke gas piston, which means that there's the one long gas piston, and as that moves back and forth, that depresses another spring and piston in your uh, in the in the receiver here. Cut myself a little on that. So what you're gonna want to do when you take this piston out is make sure you block it. Just use your finger. It's not gonna come out with a whole lot of force, but if you don't stop it, then uh, in my case, I if I uh, if I don't hold this in and I just lift up on this lever, it'll shoot across my living room. So there is quite a bit of force in there, but it's not enough to like break your finger or cause you injury if you if you put something in front of it. So just put your finger in front of it so it doesn't go shooting out. Lift up. See that comes out. Now this is what I was talking about with the Russian-made SKSs versus the uh, Chinese-made. It's a triple braided spring, so it's very good quality, very durable, very reliable, and it'll take a long time until you have to worry about changing one of these out. 
unlike the uh, standard springs that are in the uh, Chinese SKSs, which typically aren't braided at all. So they don't have uh, the same durability as these do. So if you have to change those out, then uh, I believe you still can order parts even here in Canada for them. But uh, if you really need to start worrying about changing parts, then you can probably score yourself another SKS for around $250 or $275. And that way you have a backup barrel, backup springs. Uh, if you get another one with the ATI combat stock, then you have backups of everything. So anything that needs to be swapped out, you can do that. So there's the uh, short piston. So I'll show you how that works. So one gas piston in a short in a short stroke, the longer gas piston is gonna push on the short one and that's gonna that's gonna cycle the, the gas. So that's basically how that works. Now in an SKS there's only one uh, there's only one long piston that operates the entire system. In an SKS there's two. So if you're gonna clean your SKS and clean it thoroughly then you're gonna want to clean out the uh, both pistons and the springs, uh, get them as, as clean as you can. You can just use uh, uh, bore cleaner or uh, any sort of uh, bore cleaner type uh, you know, fluid to do it, and it will clean it out well enough. Uh, in the Middle East and in Russia, what they typically do, especially during uh, World War II, is uh, they'd used to dip their uh, their boot laces in uh, motor oil and just run it through the barrel. They'd uh, knot it up, they'd put in at least a few knots in the laces, dip them in the motor oil, run it straight through the barrel, and that was typically good enough for you know, cleaning in the field. So, of course, we have... Uh, bore cleaners and, and all that other good stuff so when we take our, our firearms home we can actually clean them properly and uh, there won't be any obstructions uh, as you know with obstructions in the barrel uh, you can end up rupturing your barrel and or possibly getting seriously injured so always make sure that you clean your firearms out as best as you can uh, it may take a few hours but that's uh that's half the battle in owning a firearm is just being able to clean everything out well enough. And uh, you know, it just adds to the experience. You know, and that way you know how to properly take care of your firearm. So that's the main thing. So now that the uh, gas tube and the pistons are out, you can lift out the barrel. You can see there's nothing else holding the barrel in. It's all apart. So what I'm gonna do is just lift up. See it didn't take much force to do that. I'll slide out. And it's as simple as that. So there's the ATI stock. Very simple. That aside, yeah, let's look at a get a good look at the barrel here. So when you're looking for the information on the barrel, it's very simple to find. It's right there. So that uh, that states caliber and where it was made. Uh, as long uh, as long, uh, sorry, can't talk today. Uh, as well as uh, which uh, which arsenal this came from. So typically, these surplus rifles come from the Tula arsenal in Russia. Uh, 
which is the same arsenal that uh, the Dragonovs usually come from, as well as uh, some of the AKs. Uh, the 74 U's, I believe, uh, might even come from the Tula arsenal. Uh, you can still widely get those in other countries, but uh, Canada, not so much. Anything that's made of uh, well, that's made with the AK platform, you cannot get in Canada. Unfortunately, they're uh, prohibited weapons, so they'd have to be grandfathered to you pre nineteen ninety five in order to be able to legally own and use them. Um, unfortunately, in Canada, now you can't. So it's it's very difficult to try and get something like that, if not impossible. So there's the gas tube on the front, or the gas port. Now there is a way of cleaning the, those out. Uh, there are uh, gas port cleaning tools that you can buy off of uh, Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. They're very cheap. They're about, uh, I think, 7 or $8 last time I looked into one. So those you rarely need to clean out. Uh, no matter what, there's usually a, a lot of gas that can still get through that. So you never really have to worry about cleaning those out. But if you ever do, there are tools that are, that are required for that. And uh, they're fairly cheap. Set them on the side. Now, one thing I want to show you as well. Let's look at the uh, old carrier. So when you look at the bolt carrier, you'll see the firing pin in the center. So when everything is together, fits together just like that. So that's the uh, that's the whole system together. Of course, recoil spring goes in there. Now. One thing you'll want to do fairly often, and I suggest uh, every couple times you, you take the rifle out, then uh, you're going to want to give it a good thorough clean, as I was saying earlier. So one thing you'll want to do is clean out the firing pin. Uh, make sure to keep that uh, fairly clean, and uh, you can oil it up a little bit. It doesn't need a whole lot of oiling. But uh, just a light coat, anything that's metal on metal on these firearms, you're going to want to keep lubricated. So if you look at the extractor, this is the extractor. Turn around. The extractor moves just slightly. You can see it kind of comes out there a little bit. So when I, uh, when I first got this rifle... I didn't know at all how to take that out or if it was even possible, but it is. And it's actually quite simple to do. There's a pin. And if you look right in front of my finger there, that's the pin that holds the extractor in. So as I turn this around, here's the pin that comes through. So what you're going to want to do is hammer that out. And it, it can be a bit of a pain to do, but uh, once you do it enough times, it comes out fairly easily. And uh, it just keeps the extractor in place so you can clean your extractor. And that pin also holds in your firing pin. So you're going to want to make sure that your firing pin is kept clean. Now mine's a little bit dirty, but that's because I haven't cleaned it the, since the last time I took it out. And last time I took it out, I only put about 20 rounds through it, so I don't really worry about it too much. Uh, just if you're spending a lot of time shooting, then definitely clean it out anytime you use it. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to take that out. So what you're going to want is I've got a couple of uh, small pieces of wood here. Create a bit of a gap so when you 
beat on this to, uh, to take it out. Um, make sure you have something that, uh, that can elevate it a little bit. Uh, obviously you're not going to be able to bang this out if it's directly on a, on a surface. So you're going to start on this side where that pin comes through and you're going to push it out so you, towards you. Now you're going to need a punch. I would suggest a brass punch, but I got this stainless steel punch. It still works. It's not going to mark anything up, so you don't really have to worry about that. This is a 132nd punch. Grab yourself a hammer. And bear with me. This may be a little loud. Hopefully you saw that fall. So there's the pin that holds the firing pin together and that holds your extractor in. Now this only goes in one way. Now if I turn this over, you'll see one side is flat. The other side has a bit of a curve to it. So that only goes in one way and there's a bit of a lip there. So that goes in just like that. Now you might have to turn it a little bit just to try and get it to uh, fit properly. But once you do, you're pretty well good to go. Now this is, the extractor is spring loaded so it, it does have a very small spring in there that's uh that kind of keeps everything together so what you're going to want to do is push in and out and that'll slide that out so hold it with one finger and then just kind of push in and out and there you have it your extractor is out so you'll see where it fits in. Very simple, very easy to put back in. Hopefully the light is hitting that well enough that you can see that. Now I haven't figured out a way to try and pull this little spring out, but that spring is again triple braided. It's a very small spring. I have tried to take it out once but uh, there is quite a bit of resistance against it. So I've been too worried about possibly snapping that, uh, that little spring, so I'm not even gonna try that. So you'll see how the extractor kind of fits in. Very simple, very easy, to design, very easy design. So your firing pin. All you gotta do is just tip it a little bit. Firing pin comes right out. Very simple. You should be able to see right through it. Now your firing pin technically only goes in one way. Uh, it does have kind of a uh, triangle formation to it. So one side here is completely flat. The other side, hopefully you can see that well enough, has a bit of a, of a hump there and then it goes flat again. So it does have a bit of a triangular formation but it's very simple to put back in. So when you put that back in, what you're gonna wanna do is insert it back into your carrier and as you look through that hole, and you turn your firing pin, you see there, it's blocked. So you can't put the, uh, the pin back in that holds the firing pin in. But if you turn it, now you can. So you might just have to fiddle around a little bit with it and try and kind of see for yourself as to how it fits in, but it's very simple. 
And again, you're gonna have to hammer that back in once you're ready. So that's how you take the firing pin out. Now there is a video online, uh, SKS Armorer's Course. You can just look that up under YouTube. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good course, very uh, in-depth. Of course, it's free. So if you're unsure as to how to, uh, how to take the firing pin out, uh, if you need a, a better video than this as to how to do that, uh, you can watch uh, that video on YouTube. And it's very in-depth, and, and the uh, gentleman that, that does the video uh, goes in great depth as to how the SKS operates inside and out. And uh, it's actually a very good video, especially for first-time owners of an SKS that want to know how they work. I'd suggest look that up. Great video. So what we'll do is we'll put the extractor back in and put everything back together again. So now the extractor's back in and it's just as simple as pushing it back into that little notched area. And you can see how that's held in. Very simple. So take your pin, keep an eye on how your firing pin is seated. So try not to move it too much so that your firing pin doesn't block off your other pin. So we may have to maneuver this pin a little bit to get it back in. Take your hammer. That should be seated well enough. To finish this off, you can use the punch. Hammer it flat. Oh, now the firing pin still wants to come out, so. Of course it won't come out all the way. may not have that in the quite the right position so I'm gonna have to hammer this back out try again Hold the firing pin in. There we go. So now it's locked into place, so now it's not going to come out. So I just had to uh, maneuver the firing pin a little bit get that to fit but now that it's in it's not going anywhere so that's kind of how you know that it's in place and your extractor isn't going to come out so pretty simple design as I say just may take you a little bit of time just to kind of 
get everything to fit properly again. So putting the rifle back together, it's just as simple as reversing the process. Start with the stock and the barrel. All right, you'll see there's a catch there on the front of the barrel. So that fits right at the very front of the stock. So when you put your barrel assembly back in, make sure that uh, lug here on the top fits in and it's nice and snug. All right, uh, gas tube. Things moving around here. To put your gas tube back together, you're going to need that piece. Start with your short piston and spring. Slide that back onto the spring. Now, one thing I want to show you with this as well. It fits into that hole right on the uh, very inside here. So hopefully you can see that. So that's where that goes. And your takedown lever on the top here kind of has like a half moon shape. So you're gonna want that in the correct position to put it back in. So you're gonna have to maneuver that as you work that spring and piston back in but it'll be pretty simple. So you're gonna wanna, if your takedown lever is 90 degrees to the barrel, you're gonna wanna push that down just so there's just that little bit of uh, resistance there. Take your spring and piston, insert that. You're gonna need one hand to hold this spring and piston in. Now there's a lot of force here going behind this spring. So, might hurt the fingers after a couple tries, but you'll get her. So put that to the 90 degree position to the barrel. So once you have that spring in, the spring and piston in, and, uh, yeah, so to put it in, like I say, put this to the 90 degree position, and then as you push in the spring and piston, you're going to want to lock this down, not fully, but just to the position that it's at, where you start feeling just that little bit of tension. And take your long piston, put that back in the gas tube. It only goes in one way. Now you'll see how that protrudes through. So if you want to try and put this back on, you'll see that if I just kind of mock it up, there's not enough room. So what the piston has to do is come fully forward so it's right against the gas port and it's going to take a little bit of shimmying to get this in but just kind of work it back and forth and as you push forward to the front of the barrel and uh, wiggle it in it will properly seat Just take some, take a little bit of effort here. So you can see I'm moving it just ever so slightly to get it to fit. Now, if you try and push your gas tube and your hand guard down, you'll notice that if this is isn't quite in the right position it's going to stop the handguard and gas tube from going back in properly 
So you're going to have to kind of work at that a little bit to get it to fit. So push down just slightly on it until it, uh, until you feel like it just wants to lock, but not quite lock it down. It will take a little bit of force to get that in. So there we go, I managed to move that just enough. There. So you can see at the position that that's at now. So put that gas tube in. It's at the fully forward, or at the not fully forward position, sorry, about 90 degrees. So as you push in the spring the piston, you're going to want to put it down just that much. And then as you work your handguard in, Keep pushing down on this, not up or else the spring will come shooting back out. There we go. Now it's just about locked into place. There is going to be quite a bit of resistance there. Try to lock that down. So if need be, you can just take your screwdriver. And give it a couple taps. And now the gas tube lever, takedown lever, is back into place. So you have all your springs and uh, gas tubes in place. Turn it over. Time to put in your trigger group. So don't forget that little spring again. Drop that spring into the little hole there. Now your trigger group only fits in one way and it locks onto those lugs there. Right on that pin that I was showing you earlier. This might take a little bit of force to get this in, especially with this ATI combat stock and the rail. So it uh, takes a little bit of effort, but you're going to want to put your rail up and using one hand, push down on the barrel assembly and push up on the trigger group. It should seat, but of course, it's going to give you a little bit of resistance. So you can set it on a good and solid surface. You hear that? So that clicked into place. Now that's locked. Now this video is probably a little longer than uh, some of you want, but I wanted to try and be thorough. Now that's in, you can start with the, uh, I should say continue on, with the bolt and carrier. has to be fully cocked for this to work. As you can see, now that's perfectly into place. So put it in the fully forward position. Recoil spring goes in. Notice there's a bit of a curve to the spring. Don't worry about that. That's just the way the spring fits. Receiver cover. Uh, come on, you. There we go. 
receiver cover is in place. Now you don't want to lock the receiver cover down yet. You still got to put the rail down and then the takedown lever or the uh, takedown screw will go in on both sides. So you're going to need what I'd suggest placing one hand on top of the rail and with your thumb push on the receiver cover and then push in the takedown, uh, takedown screw. Now this fits in with an Allen key. So if you get this, uh, this scope and this rail system, uh, actually I believe these Allen keys came with the rail, not the scope. Came with uh, about three or four different sizes of Allen keys. I had a few more there. So take the larger Allen key and just screw it back into place. Might need to work at it a little bit. starting now that's in place that's not going to move so now what you're going to want to do to fit the mag back into place test your action first Lock the bolt in the rear position to fit the mag back in. These mags can be a little bit stubborn because they are polymer. So push down on the mag. I can put the grip back in, keeping in mind that your screw is still there, so don't lose that screw. Phillips. Now these screws don't cinch down too tight, but it cinches it down tight enough that you don't have to worry about anything moving. The grip is still going to be fairly tight. Now I've heard with the uh, with the Tapco stocks, some people have had issues with the screws not holding in the grips properly and the grips falling off. I've never had that issue with this ATI. It's been just an absolute wonderful firearm for me. Everything works on it without an issue. Put the scope back on. Place. Uh, I'll grab another screwdriver, cinch that down.
There we go. Now everything's in place. Your SKS is all back together and looking good. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helps you out. Hopefully, uh, helps you out well enough to decide whether or not uh, you want one of these as your first firearm. And I would absolutely suggest it. Uh, being a 762 by 39, it's a uh, very nice intermediate cartridge. It's uh, still technically a 30 caliber cartridge. So you can hunt with these. Um, and you won't have any problem taking down a, like a deer or uh, maybe even a moose at a, at a closer range. Um, they're reportedly accurate up to uh, 600 yards. Um, I have shot 600 yards with this and uh, my scope wasn't quite sighted in but I did manage to get fairly close to the target. Um, so they will they will do it if it's uh, if your scope is set up properly and if everything is is sighted in the way it's supposed to it will shoot and you know hit the target at 600 yards guaranteed so they are uh, they're uh, a very good um, uh, short all the way up to long range rifle and uh, with the ATI combat stocks and the way the stocks are designed, they do have uh, a Colt buffer tube style, so uh, an AR style uh, buffer tube with them. So it does cut down the recoil uh, well enough that, that you, know, you won't get tired or you won't get sore shooting these all day long. Uh, they're an absolutely great rifle and I would absolutely suggest one. Um, they're also very inexpensive. As I say, you can get one of these for between uh, $175 to $350 if you get one with the uh, ATI combat stocks or the uh, uh, TAPCO stocks. They're typically around $300. But uh, now in Canada, there's a company called Matador Arms, uh, based out of British Columbia. And they uh, specialize in designing uh, uh, aluminum stocks for these. So now you can get uh, a really nice aluminum stock. And uh, that's supposed to cut down the recoil a little bit more, uh, along with uh, a little bit of weight as well. Uh, I find that with the entire setup that I have here, uh, with the scope, the rail, um, the magazine, flashlight, and uh, the foregrip, I've weighed this on a scale, and it comes out to about uh, 10.9 pounds. So it, uh, it is a fairly heavy rifle. So with all the attachments on this, uh, being 10 pounds, it's not particularly something that you'd want to, say, take out in the bush hunting with you all day. Uh, you're going to get pretty tired uh, you know, lugging this thing around. But uh, if you have a, a good sling, then you can definitely uh, really cut down the weight a little bit for you and, and kind of manage that a little bit better. Uh, the sling I do have is more of a... Just a cheap uh, single point comes with this really nice uh, heavy duty clamp. And on the other side of this rifle, I have this, uh, this lug here that comes off. And I got that on Amazon for about $8. Very easy to remove and you can attach a sling it's held in by a couple of ball bearings. Very simple, it's not gonna come out. So if you have any other questions about these, feel free to let me know. Uh, again, if you like the video, let me know. 
if you want to see some more shooting videos in the future, then uh, I will definitely be posting more. Unfortunately, uh, up here in central Alberta, it's starting to get pretty cold. Winter is slowly setting in. So I won't be doing too much winter shooting, but uh, if the weather permits, I'll definitely make a good winter video for you. All right, Canadian car guy, and we'll uh, see you again on the next video.